In this series of videos, we're going to learn how to add a stored procedure to our database. A stored procedure is a group of commands that can be packaged up together and stored, and then you can call it over and over again. It's made up of TSQL statements and other procedural extensions that support this functionality. Here we'll go over several of the details we're going to need to be able to use it. One, we're going to use variables. Their names always start with the at sign, and we have to specify the type, and the type is a database type, and you use the keyword declare in the front. So you declare a variable name and specify its type. Then you can give it a value by using the set command. So set variable name equal to John. Or you can use select. And here I have a select from command. It looks just like a regular select from where clause, except that we're getting the first name. And when we get it, we're assigning it, right? We're storing it in username. If the result is empty, so if it comes back and there's no user ID with that, and so it produces an empty query, then username will have a null value. If, on the other hand, it produces a lot of rows, so this query would produce a lot of usernames, then the variable username will be the value of the last row. You can use top to get the first result only. So here I'm saying select top one, and you can choose a number or a percent here. So I'm just, this is just saying give me the top row, one row from the user, and then that will for sure only return one value for a first name, and that will be stored in username. Microsoft recommends using set instead of select. So here we can set username equals and do that same select, select top one, first name from user one and that will be the first name from the top row. Here, the same thing. If the result of the query has many rows, this time it will produce an error. So here if we get a bunch of rows and we try to assign that in this variable, that's an error. This is not of type. This is a scalar type. It was a char, right, a var char. This is returning a table. Yeah, set username. Here if we just get the top one, but we're getting two values. We're getting first name and last name. This will also produce an error. There are if statements. You just say if a condition and then a TSQL statement and an else part. You can put several things statements together. So you can group statements with begin and end. And between here, kind of like curly braces in other languages, it says the group begins here and it ends here, and inside that you can put many statements. Here's an if statement that has a begin and an end with, and then you can put lots of TSQL statements inside there. And so that's how you can expand it to be more than a single statement. There's while statements, and there's a while and a condition, and begin and end to make it as big as you want. You can use break and continue. Break stops this iteration and ends the while loop. Continue stops this iteration and begins the loop again at the beginning. There are print statements. When you use a print statement in Management Studio, it's going to show up in the Messages tab. And here we can print a message error, new user has not been added. We can also add two together, the username is, and put a string character, so any of the var chars or char values. If we want to do the number is and concatenate it with an integer value, then we have to cast that or else it'll do an error. So if we want to put two strings, you have to put two strings together in the print statement and, then, and you just simply cast it um, as a var char. There are some statements that will get us started on building procedures. Procedures allow us to do programming. Uh, they have some, some advantages. They reduce network traffic. They provide better opportunities for security, improve performance. These procedures are pre-compiled, so they don't need to be compiled at runtime, and they, so they are much faster to run, and that gives you the improved performance, and they're easier to maintain. 
instead of writing the same code over and over again, you just write it in one place and call it. And then if you want to change it, you just change it in the procedure itself. To create a procedure, you use create procedure, followed by the procedure name, and then in parentheses you list any parameter and their types. Notice that the parameters are variable names followed by a type and you can put a comma and put multiple ones or just have a single one or have a procedure that has none. And then you do as and your SQL statement. If you want to exit the procedure you can use return. Now to execute it, so we actually create and store the procedure and then when you want to call it, when you want to execute it, you use the keyword execute, put the procedure name and then in parentheses list any values that need to be sent. 